So Super Tuesday, March 3rd, is critical this year because roughly a third of all delegates are going to be up for grabs that day. The primary voting day political pundits have been talking about for months finally arrived today. Super Tuesday began in 1988 when a group of Southern governors decided they wanted to have a more concentrated Southern presence. It's intended to help uh, lead to the nomination of a more electable uh, Democrat. And so they banded together to have a regional primary where a number of the different Southern states would all vote on the same day and give them a kind of concentrated power. It's no longer a super regional uh, Southern primary. You're talking about primaries in California, Texas, Virginia, Massachusetts, Colorado, Minnesota, Arkansas, Alabama, all across the American map. And it offers an enormous trove of, of delegates and one that's going to put the one who amasses the most delegates in a great position to claim the nomination. Super Tuesday hasn't always worked in the way in which it was originally envisioned. A perfect example is 1988. It was designed in some ways to stop Michael Dukakis from becoming the nominee, yet he became the nominee anyway. It's I think it's fair to say that no one is more disappointed than I am. One of the things we learned from 2016 was it really underscored Bernie Sanders' weakness with the key voting bloc in the Democratic Party with African Americans. But on Super Tuesday, when you saw many more Southern states voting, I think at that point it really revealed how weak he was with this key constituency. These places are not like New Hampshire where you go and do a bunch of town halls. It's not a place like Iowa where you go and shake hands or maybe you hit all 99 counties. Some candidates will focus on particular parts of states in the hopes of pulling some delegates out of individual congressional districts or other candidates will focus a little bit more on winning their home states. Should you have earned that much money? Yes. I worked very hard yeah. for it. Michael Bloomberg is the big X factor this year because he's pursued a really novel strategy. He has completely skipped the four early states, didn't even compete in any of them. He basically is going to jumpstart his campaign on Super Tuesday, which it's not unprecedented, but it is so unusual we've never seen anyone pull off such a feat. And what he's been doing is just spending gobs of money between a quarter of a billion dollars and a half billion dollars on ads all across the Super Tuesday map to build his name recognition. And what we've seen is that it's worked in a lot of places. Super Tuesday is really going to be the great equalizer uh, and we'll have a much better idea of the most solid campaigns and the ones that are going to move forward. So here's the amazing thing about the presidential race this year. This is a lesson we learned from 2016. Nobody really knows. We don't know what kind of effect that Super Tuesday will have. We may end up with one progressive and one moderate, but at the same time, we may end up with a handful of candidates still left. We think the primary field will be a lot shorter after March 3rd, but we're not certain.